Uh, my name is Eric Teacher. I'm the National Specification Manager for Lightline in Canada and help support our reps in their endeavors to uh, get our products on projects and work with the consulting community. Today, we're going to be taking a, a look at the Click system and taking a little deeper dive into how one works with Click, um, what the parameters are, um, what the considerations are, and um, what the system is comprised of. We'll also talk a little bit about the ordering uh, of uh, Click and how that's done, and what you can expect in terms of uh, turnaround times and um, Let's get started. I'm going to turn off my video so that there's no distraction, um, and we'll uh, we'll focus on the presentation slides. Uh, we will have a Q&A afterwards, but um, if you are so compelled or inclined, please feel free to uh, ask questions. I've got um, Laura, and uh, perhaps Sarah will also be on the line uh, to assist with um, with the questions that um, that are being asked during the presentation. So thank you very much for joining us and enjoy the deep dive into Click. All right. So the Click system was was um, designed with uh, breaking the plane in mind. Um, if you if you'll notice on the illustration, we show a two gang system that is recessed mounted um, goes up a wall across a ceiling comes off and breaks the plane um, into, into midair uh, and then uh, uh, continues on as a surface uh, fixture into, um, into the top little, uh, right of the screen. The click can be suspended as well and, and coming out of a bulkhead in a recessed fashion and then suspended into midair. So we're going to talk about all the various uh, mounting applications for click and how that's done. Uh, some of the uh, some of the track components, etc. So let's review the system. Uh, the system is comprised of a track profile. Uh, it's very important to note the difference um, of click versus conventional line voltage track. This is a low voltage system, uh, so considerations have to be have to be um, uh, given ahead of time for where you're going to place the fixtures, what length your system is going to be which part of the track needs to be wired with, uh, with what capacity uh, in terms of power feed, um, how you're going to mount the system. There are also a variety of, um, of uh, angles that can be achieved. We have uh, T's, X connectors, a variety of power feeds inside and outside corners. So we really made this system uh, versatile and configurable. Uh, and because of that, the, the, uh, the lead up to the ordering process uh, needs a little more attention from, uh, from the consultant side and certainly from, uh, from the designer side. So we also um, have fixtures or modules that, uh, that click into the system. Um, and there is a pendant. There is an adjustable spotlight and multi-source adjustable light bar. There are standard linear multi-source light bars, solid light bars, light bar wall wash fixture, which is incredible, a double spot and a deep regress double spot. Now we'll, we'll go through each of these fixture types uh, individually so that you have a better idea of what each one is designed to do. As for drivers, we can accommodate um, virtually any type of control methodology for dimming. Um, that includes uh, forward and reverse phase, um, up to uh, 96 watts, uh, which needs to be derated. We'll talk about that in a little more detail later. Um, we can utilize zero to 10 volt dimming. We have a, we have a driver that's, uh, that's 100 watt rated, uh, which also needs to be derated in, in most cases. Um, DALI is available, DMX, Lutron Ecosystem Control. And very soon we will be launching a wireless uh, control protocol that, um, that will not only uh, be uh, available for Click, but for many of our other fixtures. So let's get right into track and, and what that looks like. So the track profile um, is an extruded aluminum um, uh, system. With, with a variety of brackets or adapters. Um, so here we're illustrating the trimless recessed track. 
which comes with a mud-in flange adapter, um, which would uh, require the traditional approach of uh, screwing the mud-in flange into the ceiling, making sure that there's blocking up above, and then having a fairly skilled uh, drywaller or artisan to, um, to mud that in. The alternative to a trimless recessed installation would be one with track that has a trimmed flange. So notice, notice that there's a small return here, so you can cut this into your drywall and not, not be as concerned about the cut line quality because the trim flange will actually cover that up. The, the last uh, track mounting illustration or the, the uh, illustration that we have of the track profile is for the surface mount and pendant version. Um, so this no longer has any of the flanges or, or brackets at the, um, at the bottom or the face of the fixture or the opening of the fixture, but it does have cover plates which are available in uh, black, white, or can be custom painted for any, uh, to match any corporate color or aesthetic. We, um, we provide fixed angle brackets which are welded to maintain uh, uh, better rigidity of, of the overall system, uh, especially if that system is being suspended. Um, you can see that, uh, that we can achieve right angles, inside corners, outside corners, and we also have T and X connectors which are illustrated um, in the uh, thumbnail above. Just going back to review the five different mounting options once again. So these can be surface mounted, suspended, recessed into a drywall ceiling, and then mud in, uh, mudded in for trimless appearance, or recessed into a hard ceiling with a trim flange, and the last mounting option is recessed into a drywall ceiling using the Precision Pro drywall channel. But this in fact will allow you to use a surface mounted version and never actually break the hard ceiling. And that will be discussed again in a little bit. Uh, a bonus with the click system is that you can gain up to three tracks together with the channel gain adapter, um, which means also that you can circuit these separately. Just a little more on the Precision Pro formed drywall channel. This, this, really, this really does allow for a, uh, an unbroken uh, drywall ceiling and uh, avoids all the various complexities of mounting brackets and how those brackets have to engage to keep the, uh, the track system up in the ceiling. Um, we, we can provide the, uh, the Precision Pro drywall channel in four foot lengths, and this simply needs to be blocked in at the sides, but we'll already have a backing, in some cases metal, in some cases wood, if that's your preference, to allow the surface mounting channel to simply screw into the recessed cavity, and again provides a level five finish. Now we're going to look at the click modules or fixtures. There are eight different styles to choose from. Um, these are all numbered. So as I, as I read through, have a glance at the pendant, which is number one. The adjustable spotlight is available in two different beam distributions, a 10 degree spot or a 20 degree spot. The solid light bar, number three, is currently offered in a 12 inch, basically a one foot, a two foot, and a three foot option. Um, these, uh, these imperial sizes are actually derived from the metric uh, 300, 600, and 900 millimeters that, uh, that we originally launched them in, but we are going to be redimensioning everything to the imperial system to make it, um, make it more consistent. The light bar wall wash, again, this is an incredible fixture that you have to see the performance of to believe, but um, I'll mention that once again in a, in a short while. Um, it has a 70 degree asymmetric distribution, which means that if you mount this fixture roughly two to three feet uh, away from the vertical surface you are planning to wash, 
and roughly two to three feet on center, depending on the, the vertical intensity you're looking for, this will give you a very, very uniform distribution um, over uh, roughly a six foot height. Again, to be, uh, to be discussed a little bit uh, further. The deep regress double spot, the, uh, the number five fixture has a 30 degree, um, actually this is shown as 19 degree, but I believe it is a 30 degree optic, um, which provides excellent down lighting, but very, very good cutoff of the, uh, of the source for, um, for extremely, extremely comfortable uh, viewing angles and virtually no glare. The multi-source light bar illustrated on the bottom right uh, is available in three different lengths, a five light version, a 10 light version, and a 15 light version. Uh, the 15 light multi-source light bar produces a significant quantity of light uh, at 30 watts. And so, um, so very few of these might be needed, uh, perhaps on five or six foot spacings to achieve uh, decent illuminance below. The double spot 62 degree is the same as the deep regress double spot, except that um, the lenses are um, allowing the, the higher angles of light to be, uh, to be produced, which means that uh, this will produce better vertical illuminance. So provide um, a much better lighting if you have, um, if you have uh, items on the wall that need to be illuminated or perhaps, um, perhaps people and faces for video conferencing applications. The adjustable multi-source um, is the newest addition to the spot light family. Um, and it simply takes the, the intensity and the punch of the multi-source five line bar and gives you the ability to pivot, adjust, and aim that into a specific direction. Looks very, very clean from below. We'll, uh, we'll dive right into, uh, into more, uh, more conversation on the fixtures. So the, the pendant um, can, uh, can drop as, uh, as much as uh, 102 inches from, from the track. The adjustable spotlights, again, available in, in two different uh, beam spreads and can articulate from 90 degrees to 355 degrees, which means that you can aim straight down or um, directly across a room. And that's, and that's the, type of, uh, the type of work that these, the adjustable spotlights do is they, will, uh, they can frame out something that's, um, that's quite, uh, quite far away because of the candela or the center beam candle power that's produced. The solid light bars, um, as I mentioned, we, we currently offer in three different sizes. Um, our intention is to revamp that particular fixture family and provide up to an eight foot click in light bar that will, uh, that will be uh, uh, manufactured um, in our Richmond Hill facility. The light bar wall wash, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that again when we get to uh, another slide. Uh, again, the deep regress double spots, 19 degrees. I believe we'll be updating that to 30 degrees. Uh, this is an excellent uh, downlight solution. Uh, place one of these every couple feet to get uh, 30 to 35 foot candles uh, on the work plane, uh, which would typically be a, a you know boardroom table or a kitchen island or something in that uh, in that vein. Um, with the multi-source light bar uh, providing a, a lot of horsepower for downlighting and the double spot, uh, which has the 62 degree optic or the lens closer to the aperture of the, of the fixture itself will give you better vertical illuminance. Finally, the adjustable multi-source is, is a very punchy uh, addition to the spotlight family and, uh, and, and will literally throw a, a decent amount of light into, uh, into a corner that's, uh, that's uh, 40 to 50 feet away. So a summary on the modules. Um, we, give, we, we provided the form factors that lighting designers need to create a layered appearance and to cover all of the um, lighting applications that one would, would typically be looking for uh, to illuminate a space. So you can set the mood and enhance the atmosphere in your room by selecting the right fixture and, making, uh, and, and pointing the light to where you need it. 
And here we'll just come back to the wall wash optics. So we've, um, we've graphically illustrated um, a 34 and a half inch setback on a 10 foot wall, which illustrates that we're going to uniformly wash six feet of that wall right in the middle. That's, that's with that setback. If you wanted the, um, the, the, the primary distribution of the light to, uh, to be more intense, you would move that a little bit closer to the wall, something akin to 18 to 24 inches. So here are the design considerations. Because the click system is manufactured from the ground up, um, everything is produced in our facility in Richmond Hill. We have a very specialized saw table system that will cut to eight ten thousandths of one inch accuracy. So our typical um, our typical tolerance on um, on the fabricated cuts on the on the system lengths is plus minus one and a half millimeters. <coughs> for for excuse me, for anyone that's not familiar with the metric system. That's uh, roughly one sixteenth of an inch. Very, very uh, uh, tight tolerances, which is why we need all of this information. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we need all of this information up front. So what I'm illustrating on the right is the click system request form. This form is available online. Um, uh, there's a link directly from the click landing page to the system request form. And, and here's the information that we're going to be looking to gather. Um, in order to provide you with a budgetary quote. We need the length and the shape of each run. We need to understand whether this is a single or a multi-track or ganged system. Uh, the type of ceiling that this is mounting into or onto. Um, cover panels. Um, if this is a surface or suspended application, you'll, you'll want to let us know whether a black or a white, which are the two stock colors, or a custom color is, is going to be needed. Uh, that will also affect the costing because custom color will cost a little extra. Then you need to determine, and, and this, is, this is really key to making sure that, um, that we get the right request in from the first time, determine how many modules, so each of the fixtures, um, are going to be located on every portion of your run. Um, and roughly where those fixtures are going to be located. And this is needed because each length or section of track can be powered independently to provide the necessary power to for as many fixtures as are needed. Let's review this um, in more detail. But before we do, let's just go through the form. This form is um, in PDF format. It is fillable, so every place that you see a blue shaded area is, um, is an area where you can either uh, provide a checkbox, uh, it'll either be a checkbox, or you can provide text or numerical uh, entry. So very, very simple and very, very quick, and it gives our uh, product development and engineering team the information they need to come up with a budgetary quote. Um, so once you've determined the number of fixtures that you need, um, and, and you don't necessarily have to work through this alone, um, we will be showing you or we will be advising how many drivers are necessary based on the numbers of fixtures that you've indicated are going on a particular run. So because there has to be power supplied for the fixtures uh, per length of track, we can actually provide specific amount of power to, an in, to a, um, a limited portion of track, if you will. Um, we, have, um, we have drivers that are rated up to 100 watts, and these need to be derated by 20%. Generally, this is done when drivers are concealed or installed in a, in a, uh, a limited uh, space such as the ceiling plenum or an electrical enclosure that was specifically designed, maybe a, maybe a driver cabinet or a, an electrical room where they've, um, where they've isolated the drivers so that uh, those drivers can be accessed and maintained uh, over the system life. Um, however, we need to power each section of track so that we have enough power going to that section of track to cover the wattages of the fixtures that, have been, uh, that are going to be desired. And so for that, what we've illustrated here are the various power feed uh, adapters that 
are available for the click system in order to give us the versatility of placing any fixture where we want it. Um, so looking, looking at the power feed adapters, you'll see that we can, we can feed. There's, a, there's two versions of a mid track or a mid um, uh, run power feed. We can, we can place this right in the middle or at any section and power just um, X number of inches. We also have end feed adapters, so we can feed the track. Um, I'll give you an example. We have a two meter track. We want to feed uh, one meter on the left from the left side and one meter from the right on the right side. And we're going to feed and then break the power feed in the middle so that each your left and right one meter lengths can be controlled separately, or you've done this to accommodate enough power density so that you can place as many fixtures as you need to, up to 80 watts, on that section of track. So just to reiterate, um, our driver options are available for forward or reverse phase dimming, that's TRIAC or ELD. Um, we offer a zero to 10 volt option. We can, we can use DALI to control the system. Uh, we have a DMX uh, driver interface. We can utilize Lutron's ecosystem, and very soon we will have a Wi-Fi controlled um, dimming uh, protocol, uh, something that you'll be able to group and zone fixtures with individually and control them and possibly even color them. More on that uh, another time, perhaps during Dan's uh, presentation on dimming this coming Friday. So here's, um, here's what a, a set of shop drawings would look like. And at the end of this, we will review the ordering process in terms of what comes first, um, uh, the, the click uh, request form, um, and then what, what happens after that, what that generates. So this is page one of a set of shop drawings that was done for a project, a local project called Duncan Gallery. Um, you'll see that we're using six drivers here, six power feeds. Um, on a 48 foot uh, linear uh, linear run and so this tells me that um, each of our drivers is powering roughly eight feet of track section the next page shows you the bill of materials so this is all of the click products um, uh, identified by our system part numbers as well as descriptions um, and you'll see some, uh, some illustrations of the click profile, which in this case is going to be suspended, uh, the driver dimensions, and the fixture type that is, uh, that is to be used on this predominantly. The last page of the shop drawings shows the power feed sections. So if you'll notice, starting from left to right the left section the left uh, the first eight foot section on the left is being fed from the end the next eight foot section has a mid-track power feed with uh, the power swipes only powering on the right side and this continues to the next driver which is powering the green eight foot section and then we repeat the same thing, but from the right, again, using a power feed, an end power feed to, to uh, power up the pink eight foot section of track, then a mid track power feed drop with left circuit swipe power feed. And this is powering the yellow section. And then the last driver is powering the blue section of track. From there, you can now understand how important it is um, to begin the process with a, with a properly filled out click system request form. Again, this is available online on the click landing page. It's also available as a PDF, uh, which, uh, which our sales, uh, sales team can, uh, can email to you um, if you don't find it or don't access it. The click system request form, submitting that will generate um, for Lightline to create a budgetary drawing and a quote. The budgetary drawing won't be quite as detailed, but it will illustrate the, the system lengths and shapes um, and the dimensions. 
um, and likely the number of drivers and fixtures that are, um, that are going to be requested. Once that quote is submitted to the rep, the, the rep will confirm details, make revisions, and resubmit as required. Or um, if, the, if the budget drawing is, um, is accepted without changes, then that should initiate the, uh, the purchase order, the distributor to issue a purchase order to Lightline. And that triggers Lightline to create and issue the shop drawings that we just reviewed. Uh, the shop drawings can uh, can cover. Well, we've seen we've seen projects with uh, with up to fourteen different profiles um, for high end residences. Once the shop drawings have been reviewed by the client uh, and approved, sent back to Lightline, this generally triggers an order release, or the order um, stays in the system uh, with uh, where, with a release anticipated once the product is needed. Uh, just to make sure that everyone understands because this system is manufactured in-house, we can typically deliver a, a, production, uh, a production configuration in under a week. The process of submitting the, uh, the click request form uh, to get to a budgetary drawing can take up to 48 hours. Um, uh, this, is, this is predicated on, on workloads, of course. Uh, and in many cases, we have uh, budget, uh, budget quotes out uh, within 24 hours. Um, but it has, uh, it has taken as long as uh, a couple of days for, uh, for some of the more complicated ones. Um, we also wanted to mention that we are developing a shopping catalog <clears throat> with, uh, with a variety of basic set shapes and sizes so that, um, so that you can select from a, a pre-configured uh, click system for uh, for placing faster orders, uh, obviously faster reviews because shop drawings will already be prepared for these, um, and modifications of course will uh, will be allowed. So that's the general ordering process, and that is um, that is uh, the the end of our review for Click. And now I'm happy to take some questions.